<laughs> this is gonna be interesting. I have all my props with me this time. I don't normally do things with props, but this time it seems to be appropriate because I want to talk about my wife and uh, I love my wife, you know? And there's, I feel the blush come up through my back into my face. I have to say that my wife is, uh, in case you don't know who she is, she is on the internet. Maybe you can see that. Maybe you can't. But anyways, I love my wife. She uh, is a person that I met on the internet, and we got together, and you know, I I had uh, been through previous marriages that had gone really to pieces. People that had. The best way to say it would be for others to talk about it, but I guess if it's to bless those who have gone through divorce, sometimes the guy isn't the one at fault, you know? <laughs> now, should I have married these people in the first place? Oh, I don't know, probably not. Except, just like I tell my sisters, and I told my mother when she was alive, did I marry them after praying? Yep, sure did. Did those marriages work out? Nope, sure didn't. <laughs> so what happened to them? Well, some slept around and went off on their tangents, and some, they say, used me, and some, they say, just probably shouldn't have been in the first place. But my wife, Lori, whom I am married to, I like to tease and say my current wife, and she hates that because, you see, she's been through a divorce, too. Now... Fortunately for her, as opposed to me, I guess, if you want to look at it that way, she wasn't a Christian when she got married. She married young and had lots of kids. And then she uh, kind of took in kids from the neighborhood, too, because she was one of those types of people that tended to care in a great way. And unfortunately, no one cared for her. So she went through her marriage and... It turned into a disaster, as sometimes marriages do. And so she divorced. And then she remarried. And that turned into a nightmare. Sadly, along the end of it, short of it, is she found me. <laughs> well, I, you know, after having been around for a long time, shared with her the gospel and she got saved, you know. And so praise the Lord, she's a dynamic, wonderful, born again Christian. But, uh, and this is an encouragement for all you divorced people out there. You know, you think that it's the end of the world. Nah, no, it's not. You know, did Jesus say that if you marry a divorced woman that you're committing adultery? Yeah, but you know what? You can be forgiven. So I'm not trying to play it down. But, you know, if you need a whole teaching on it, then, you know, contact me. <laughs> I'll give you the, I'll give you the entire theological premise behind it, as well as the circumstances and, I've even argued with Baptists, you know, I mean, come on now. And we know they only, they never forgive, you know. The, the one thing you can't forgive a person, the unpardonable sin is divorce, you know, in the Catholic Church and the Baptist. <laughs> but oh well. Anyways, talking about my wife, you know, I love her. She's uh, the only person in my life ever that I can think about and blush, you know. And, that amazes me. That's kind of fascinating to me because my reactions to her are all intimate. They're all tender. They're all inside and come outside. And it amazes me because, you see, heck, I was one of those ugly ducklings that, you know, when I grew up, I was the wallflower in high school and Unfortunately, being a poet and a writer, you know, I love from afar and I fall in love with, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry. No, not really. <laughs> but Jane, Mary, and Susie. <laughs> but it was easy, you know, to fall in love, you know, to fall for, as we always say, that person that, oh, 
they captured your imagination so your feelings followed your imagination to create for you this person that you were so in love with filling your heart oh and you had goosebumps and you had feelings and you had all those wonderful statements and flowing verse and prose for that person you loved because you find your feelings changed after a while and you didn't love them you thought you did but somehow that puppy love that love you had for them evaporated somewhere and then you fell in love with someone else and you went how could I love someone else or what's even worse you listen to the music and you found out I'm in love with two people of course then you become a Christian and you go God so loved the world and you go everybody <laughs> love's got me confused <laughs> I love my wife I laugh because when I say that I love my wife because I choose to love her that one is a challenge for a lot of people and some of you know what I mean though but you know before I met my wife I love my dogs you see right here that's Hosanna you see right here that's red you see right here that's me <laughs> My dogs, one of them wandered in the yard, so he was a stray, so you know, red was kind of a different story. But Hosanna, Hosanna, I went out, and I was all alone in Alaska, and uh, I wanted a dog, so I went to the pound, and Susan Butcher had dropped off some dogs, you know, and they were a litter that was being let go or whatever. So there's all these puppies, you know, and inside the pound, you know, in Alaska, it's kind of a nice pound, you know, animal shelter, whatever you want to call it. And there was this little bundle of fur, you know, and she was so little tiny. And all the other dogs were jumping and bouncing and barking and doing their thing. And they were all the same litter. But there was just one sitting there, just looking up at me with just those little eyes, little sorry lip. And she seemed to say, save me, which is what Hosanna means, save us. So I picked her up and I just melted. It was like, oh, oh. I was gone. <laughs> so I grabbed her, you know, and I held her and, you know, I went down to the desk and paid for her and got her shots and all the stuff that we do. They didn't give those little RFD chips or whatever in those days, but Anyways, got it registered and everything, so I took her and I she was in my, my lap, you know, and I had her and I think it was a week later that I was driving to town, you know, and I, I went to open up the car door to get out to get some gas and she booked out of my lap, ran out the street and got ran over. I died. My heart stopped. I went over, I picked up this lifeless looking fur, this no blood, but just looked like a mash of whatever. And I, I couldn't deal with it. I went home and told my roommate to drive me to, buddy of mine, drive me to the, the vet. So we went to the vet and I gave him to the emergency room and they, two hours later, gave me back my dog and it was fine. <laughs> But Hosanna grew up with me, and I spent many, many, many hours of throwing frisbees and doing things with her. She was just the love of my life, you know, for she always wanted to be around me, and always wanted to be with me, and wanted to be near me, and she just loved to see me, and she wouldn't go far from me. And we'd play games where I'd play hide-and-seek, and she'd try to find me, you know, and she even seemed to know that, you know, I was playing hide-and-seek. So you know how you get attached to dogs, cats, animals. But I loved Hosanna. And I let her have one litter and she had 12 puppies. 
throughout Alaska and throughout Oregon and different places I lived, you know, I would take my dogs and throw frisbees and they would, some newspaper guy or somebody wind up taking pictures and somehow they wind up on the front page on some slow news day on a Saturday and there'd be my dogs, you know, and I loved them. It was like, oh, but they were a pain in the butt. I had to run them. I had to take care of them. I had to provide for them, you know, and they were my kids. And after about, oh, 12 years, 13 years, when I was getting ready to go to Jerusalem, I had to give them up to my sisters to take care of them. And uh, eventually they died. You know, they, they had a good life, a spoiled life. But they, I fell in love with because of all the love they poured out on me. And a lot of times that's how people react to love, is that when somebody loves you unconditionally, you love them all. But you know, my wife, I chose to love her. You see, the one thing I noticed about when I chose her was that I asked her, I said, when I was looking, and you could say shopping if you want to, when I was developing or trying to develop a relationship, I said to everybody I could find, internet dating, I don't want a person who's looking for a one night stand. I don't want a person who's looking for a relationship. I want a person I can grow old with, that I could look back on my life with and say, we have common memories and we shared in life and living. We shared in love. And the interesting thing was my wife shared with me some of the things that she had gone through in her life. And immediately, you know, when you have this gift of discernment, you know, you kind of see through the <laughs> smoke screen and sure enough, you know, she had a lot of issues, you know, that were taken care of, you know, slowly but surely. But when she got saved, you know, as she grew in the Lord, I told her, I said, look, I can fall in love with anybody. I said, that's the easy part. I said, I could tell myself I'm in love and make myself feel things because frankly, you could take a bite of sugar, you know, a Hershey bar and suddenly you've got a rush, a sugar rush and you feel something. But I said, the difference between what I'm doing and what you're doing is that because I'm a born again Christian and you're maybe a baby Christian, I'm choosing to love you. And on the day that you die, I will lift you up to the Lord my God and say thank you for the privilege of having this woman that I was honored to share with and to care for until I could present her to you, Father, faultless before you for what Jesus has done and allow me to participate in her salvation as I shared my life with her as she shared her life with me. And I thank you for that privilege and honor of doing so. Because God, I chose to love her as you chose to love me. Maybe that's not your definition of love. To choose. But it is God's. Because God chose you. God chose to give to you the opportunity and the capability to love as he loves. My wife and I, we love to go out dancing. We love every Friday or Saturday night, we go out to this, one of these native casinos somewhere that it's always well lit up, you know, go figure, it's not a nightclub. <laughs> but they always have this little stage, you know, and they always have this little space that they'll let people dance and old fogies like me, or maybe some young people too, you know, depending on if the band's good or not, you know, they, they dance. So we go and we dance, you know, People would come up and ask, you know, well, did you win anything? I said, nah. Do you gamble? No. Well, what do you do? I go dancing. That's, oh, okay. You know, they kind of wonder. Then, you know, other times, you know, people come up and say, well, what do you do? And I said, dancing with my wife. And they're amazed because, you see, I love to dance. I've always loved to dance. And my wife, enjoys dancing <laughs> but because we enjoy doing it together we go out on a regular basis because we love participating 
It's something we do together. And now, as we just went out this, just, just this last weekend, it was amazing. I mean, we had a blast. We were dancing and laughing, and I'm a character. I'm an A-type personality, and she's more diminutive and kind of quiet, you know, sort of. Although everybody loves her because she's a good listener and she talks, you know, that's the thing that, you know, most people do, you know, interrelate, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a good for inspiring, but, you know, I get bored after a while. But we were dancing and having fun and people were laughing and carrying on and she started laughing and she started carrying on, kind of like me in a way, becoming a little bit kind of like me, but I'm way over the top. So anyways, we danced, you know, and then I... Slow song came on, and it was a good band, so they knew how to play it. <laughs> and we went out, and she looked at me, and she says, you want to dance to this one? I said, yeah, you know. And we looked over, and there was a professional ballroom teacher, and he was taking the slow step with his partner, making it look so sensual. And uh, my wife danced with me slow, you know, and I... I do some moves, you know, and then I do this, and I do this, you know, and I dip, you know, and then I go back to the slow where people are just hanging on each other, and then I go back to the moves, you know, and kind of the spin, and then I do some things that people don't think of. I walk out and do around. I spin, and then I spin her stuff. So we go out on the dance floor, and we dance, you know, and we're just carrying on with each other and having a good time. And as we walk off the dance floor, someone comes up to her, a woman, and says, You guys were awesome. You were better than those two over there. And it made her night. And it was a blessing, you know, to see the joy on her face as she begins to experience the fullness of what God wants to do in all of our lives as we appreciate what we can give to each other, as we relate one to another, as we choose to love each other in a most personal intimate way with the things we enjoy doing and you know what else my wife inspired me because when she got saved she would come out here where I'm sitting on this deck and faithfully persistently and consistently read her Bible every single day I looked at that and man it inspired me I said I remember when I was like that you know, I need to get back to being like that. <laughs> I began to get convicted. Imagine that. Me, convicted by my wife. <laughs> I've been a Christian forever. <laughs> but there's something else, too. Every night, we are the opposite people. You know, I like staying up late. She goes to bed early. You know, I mean, she's gone through hormonal changes, as we all do when we get older. And so she gets hot flashes and stuff. So, you know. <laughs> certain amount of relationships are staying kind of like distant, sort of. But anyways, you know, we still sleep in the same bed, thank God, you know. But the point being is that every night, every night, I come to her, she's going to lay down in bed, she reads, you know, and I come to her and kiss her goodnight. But when I do, I see the face that just relaxes, and she's kind of like, Falling asleep while she's reading the book and she's out like a light, you know. I wake her up and she's got that baby face that most people do after they've been sleeping. And I tell her how beautiful she looks. And she does. And she smiles. And she's one of those types of people that walks around carrying a smile all the time. But every night she knows that she's going to get told she's beautiful and she's going to know that I mean it. And there's one reason why it's true. There's one reason why God made it so real in my life and made me fit perfect for her and she for me. And it's pretty, pretty easy to do. It's a pretty simple solution, but it's got to be redone every day. It's got to be refocused. Every day, it's got to be, as a matter of fact, lived as though each new day, it becomes something you have to do and you have to say. I love my wife because I choose to. Do you?
I got the wrong book. So I guess you can tell me you love your wife, but I wonder. Do you love your wife like you love your dog? Do you love your wife like you love your children? Do you love your wife like you love your ministry or Jesus? You see, I've even told my wife, hey, you know, if you want to leave, go. Because I love you enough to set you free. But I choose to love you. And whatsoever the Lord tells you to do, that you should do. And she chooses to stay with me. <laughs> God knows why. But how do you love your wife? How do you love your children? How do you love your God? The truth is, if you choose to, then you're on the right track. But if you think it's about feelings, you have no idea what love is. Union is power. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Claim that promise always. Know it is truer than when two of my lovers meet and I am the third. Never limit that promise. When you two are together in my name, united by one bond in my spirit, I am there. Not only when you meet to greet me and to hear my voice, but always I am there. Think what this means in power. It is again the lesson of the power that follows two united to serve me. He is bound to be among you at the calling of your heart. Rest assured that this troubadour is acting on his heart. Where the union of your spirits here has caused him to remain. For whenever two or more are gathered together in his name, there is love. The choice is yours. I love my wife. Because I choose to.